This is your fr the only demonstration you're going to get until I come back. We love. In two weeks, he's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so you start the same way that we open the double helix, right? You see, it's going to open up. However, I'm going to continue. You see, see, if I keep going, suddenly this is going to want to reverse directions. Let me get the pli you got pliers around. The pliers? There's one right in front of the eye. So you're just holding it in one place, but continuing to open yes. it with your hands. And okay. tip sometimes yeah. is difficult. So. so you can see the ruffle begin. Okay. So depending on where you decide to open it is going to decide the size of the ruffle. I'm going to do it to do it evenly. I just pay attention where my forefinger points. I'm going to grab the first ruffle with my forefinger, and just it's a very comfortable way to hold it. And wherever it points, every time I open the ruffle, I'll make sure it points about the same direction. So find the spot. See what's happening? And get my thumb, and you just keep going all the time. And you're twisting. Yeah. Right. But I'm following it. It only wants to go one direction. There's, a, Of course, you need a little bit of force to do it, but you have to be careful not to force it in the sense that it wants to open where it wants to open. That's one of the keys to this. The only resistance is because it's metal. So you follow the path of least resistance. If you don't do that, it, you don't get it. Now I'll go to the next one. It's a beautiful move, and it feels great when you get it the first time. I got, this is one of the forms that came to me completely accidentally. I was trying to do something entirely different. And uh, what I was trying to do, now I know how to do it, it ended up being a lot easier than I thought. I, I was following it the wrong way, but I still was, you know, a near fight. And I thought, well, I wonder, you know the big columns and St. Peter's, the sort of, big empty hollows of well, that marble actually. And I wanted to make the that in gold. Or in metal. Gold you know, in, in metal. And I didn't quite understand. I knew there was no access to that whatsoever. But I didn't know how to get there at the time. So I thought, well, what I should do is to add the class the spiral as tight as I possibly can. And then close like I did for the uh, necklace. Uh, I thought that that would be the approach. That, for reasons I won't go into it, it didn't work. And so I was so frustrated that I was doing this by hand that I just started playing with it and boom, it opened up. And the piece is right in there. See the ruffle? Where are all the ruffles? What you know is one of the bracelets. Well, it's not not this the one, one you here. That's the very first ruffle I ever had. Oh, wow. The first one and then... Have a yeah, I, I do the. There are many versions, you know. You can play with you the edges. Oh, yeah, yeah, very creative. And you saw the other bronze one that hasn't been patinaed. You had a couple of others. Yes, yeah. you talk right through how you did that? Sure. You'll notice that all the forms, and if you reach in there, there's a longer one with a yeah. ruffle that turns into a speculum. That long one right where. There's a silver one that has a ruffle. Yeah, that's this one it. here. That one, the spicula yeah. that becomes this one here. It's the same mm -hmm. idea. And all the forms, Holy can, one can come into another. Uh, I had a bunch of other ones that are really nice. This is a model for a larger piece. God, that I wanted lovely. to make a real big one. Interestingly enough, this ruffle here was not uh, well, this one is the one? Yeah, this one was done the way this one was done. Uh, but you can also open up these beautiful ruffles without, if you don't anticlass it so much. You have enough leverage that you can actually turn them in with your hands.